What's up guys, this is Cher talking. welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'll be making a full review for the Romancy Festival Kaiser Banner. That brings out Kaiser, a damage dealer, but also party supporter. Asilus, a damage dealer, but also a counter specialist in party supporter. And Jen, a full-time damage dealer for grind and even for boss fights. Well, let's go straight to RSRSXYZ website and let's start with Alkaiser. You can see that Alkaiser has a very high agility, 128, very close to the cap that we have right now being 130. STR being 117, that's good enough. His will is good for a damage dealer, 91% and 84 endurance. Well, he does not need intelligence and his love and charisma are just on the average levels. Moving on for passage. When being attacked, damage is reduced by 25%. Also, mighty enough for turn gets 2 BP. When landing an attack, he will always chase with Sparkling Roll. Sparkling Roll is an A power attack with Blunt and Sun. This is a team of the character. He will always be attacking with Blunt and Sun. Then, he will still have a 50% chance to chase when attacking with Real Phoenix Plus. That Real Phoenix Plus is a 4S power attack with Blunt and Sun. That's super strong. It will usually do 3 times the damage of Sparkling Roll. Then, we have... Start of Fight, Spreading Justice. This is actually pretty nice. Sp spreading Justice is permanent in battle, and he will give this effect to everyone. And let's check this out. You get this 20% damage increase at all times. It lasts for one turn, but it will stack, so it always triggers. And also 35% damage reduction versus shadow damage. That's pretty nice as well. So, a very good character when the enemies use channel damage. Also, when landing an attack, if your HP is on critical, it will activate two different things. The first one, a recover that will heal 2000 HP, and it will grant this attacker a defense up that decreases damage taken for the whole fight by 20%. That's right. If you are on an enemy that attacks with shadow, and you get to critical, you already have minus 20 and then minus 35. And that's not just that, because this guy can decrease damage taken with something else. Sometimes it may be hard to get into critical, but it's just 30% of your HP. If you are healing too much or having too many defense boosts, it may not trigger. So you have to think well the cards that you are using together with Al Kaiser. Then, on the end of every 5 turns, counting from the start of battle, that means 5, 10 and beyond, you will restore one usage of Glory Force. But what is Glory Force? It's a support skill that is also fast that will give you one of the up. That increases damage potential by 40%, lasts for 2 turns. A guard up very large that decreases damage taken by 50%, lasts for 2 turns. And one evasion for 1 hit that lasts for 1 turn. And this is 5 VP cost, meaning that you always have 5 VP. Can be used 2 times per battle, and every 5 turns you can restore and use it again. Well, the first hit will be negated, and then you decrease damage taken. If you already have some other ways to decrease damage taken, this is actually very powerful. And use it on the right scenarios. Then, uh, if he gets attacked and kill it, he will revive at least once with 30% of max HP. That would trigger the critical HP healing and the defense up, meaning that it's exactly very nice. If you get one shot, you revive and trigger full heal and defense up. Then we have maximum voltage, increasing heat up 30% five times per battle to reach 150% increase, but thanks Time to build up. Skill number one is one inch punch, a single target, just blunt attack that can apply guard down, cost to BP, guard down small, decreases the defense of the enemy by 12%. I don't really like this attack, I'll probably just use normal or some other stuff that has zero BP cost via inheritance because, well, this guard down small is not great, it just lasts for one turn and the attack itself is not strong. The second one we already discussed it, and the third one is Rising of Phoenix, single target, blunt and sun. Recovers all allies HP by around 250 and grants them all defense boost medium that decreases damage taken by 25%, lasts for 2 turns and will stack. The attack itself has double S power and 8 PP cost. The game wants to say that you can use a perfect cycle of skill number 3 and skill number 1, but in all honest, no. Use Rising of Phoenix and then you can uh, use Sheree or Liz, people that give you BP back and then you can try to keep using Rising of Phoenix more. Uh, than just using something else. Well, this is a very nice setup because Al Kaiser is already giving you defense up via critical HP 
he decreases shadow damage, and he even applies defense boost. So, the way that he was designed, he can replace some people in the party, for example. If you don't need all that much defense boosts, you can remove Liz from your party, since Liz just doesn't do damage, she keeps using Dragon's Blasting most of the time, and then you will use your Alkaiser, because you will do damage, and damage is great, because you have a guaranteed chase and you have a chance to chase with 4 has power. That's actually pretty similar to what Joe does. Well, Joe has a very nice damage as well. She has a skill with double S power, costs more, but she applies both defense and attack boost. Okay, so the defense boost is just the same. Also lasts for two turns, but Joe has Flame Force, a skill that will uh, trigger this defense boost that will just keep decreasing damage for each new hit of the enemy. If the enemy attacks multiple times, this is super effective, especially if there are multiple enemies in the fight. But they do different types of damage. Joe is fire and nice, while Alkaiser is blunt and sun. They can be used together for very defensive setups, or sometimes you just want one because of the element. But even if you feel like you don't need to use Joe, her passive is still very useful. And Alkaiser uh, can replace Joe only in some scenarios. Not all of them. If the enemy doesn't attack so much, you can replace Joe entirely. But, well, Alkaiser is too strong with just this setup, but he can get a little better even with Inheritance. And those Inheritances are, for example, Final Crusade from his Perfector style. This is a 3 LP he recover spell that gives guard up medium decreasing damage taken by 25%. It cannot stack, but it will stack with defense boost though. 6 BP is very close to what he gets. 5, and the recover will be max. It will recover from 0 to max just fine. So, there is also something else that could be used, for example, Key Meditation, that can be amplified to Key Meditation Plus, that recovers HP, and it cleanses from ailments, and will give you 3 BP so that you will have more BP to try to use more of your uh, Rising Al Phoenix. So, instead of spending 2, you actually get 3 extra, so 6 BP plus 2, 8 BP in a turn. That's exactly what you need to use Rising Al Phoenix again, so that you have sometimes uh, 2 in a row. So, uh, there are other stuff that will work pretty well, like for example, High Jump Kick, but I do believe that if you want to use this type of skill, you can just use the school version of red anyway, but okay, you have some damage reduction, high jump kick is good for full damage, but defense boost is just too good to use something else. Raging Real Fist is a good skill, but I also better use it with school version, and there is at least punishing combo that some people may still like, because this is a fast attack now with 3 hits, but since this Alkaiser does not benefit from hits, he actually gets BP by the end of a turn, I don't see much usage on this. The character works pretty fine as he is, and I do believe that the Final Crusade is the best inheritance, unless you want to go for Key Meditation, that can also give you BP if you want. Everything else doesn't really matter too much, Alkaiser is good as he is, a pretty strong damage dealer that rivals Joe as a damage dealer, although not exactly a support, but comes pretty close, Alkaiser is a OP grade character in our tier list, it's not exactly a must have as Joe, but very close and useful if you want to pull for the character. And one last thing, Glory Force is a pretty strong skill because of the evasion depending on the boss behavior, but it's not even the best thing about Alkaiser. His damage, his defense boost, and critical heal plus defense up is more than enough, but in some fights, the Glory Force will prove to be useful to decrease damage taken and survive better. The next character is Ocelus, and she is a little bit of a hybrid. You can see the SDR is 118%. We have 92% dexterity if you want to inherit rapier skills from her past style. And 91% agility because she has to be fast, needed higher agility than this. 92% intelligence because she can debuff and can inherit in debuffs. 101% will is very nice for a character like Ocelus because she can get inflicted with ailments when trying to counter. So she suffers a little about love and charisma, but it's okay. Moving on, she has... 
Scrum Guard, that's right. When everyone is alive, decreases damage taken by 20% at all times. When landing an attack, recovers 2 BP. This is actually awesome. Then we have Offensive Breakthrough, that increases damage potential by 20, reduces damage taken by 25%, and starts the fight with 11. She then gets 30% damage increase for a total of 50%. When attacked, damage will be reduced by 30, so she has 30, then 25 again, and then 20 from passive. When she lands an attack, she always chases with Azure Strife. That's right, Azure Strife is the same attack from her evil version. Triple S power is slash and blunt, and after attacking, she enters defensive counter, meaning that she takes damage and she needs to attack before the enemy in order to have this. Then she counterattacks with Azure Revenge, that is also a triple S power attack, that will use the skill rank of Ezra's Revenge. So you have a strong attack as a chase, a triple S power as chase, and if the enemy uses a direct attack on you, you're gonna counter. So the good thing about this is that having a guarantee chase already gives you 5 BP per turn at least. And then if the enemy attacks you, you're going to get 2 BP every time that you counter. Very nice setup. But because of this very powerful chase and so many effects, she loses 3 LP, but gets also 25% chance to evade at all times. So, 50% damage, 25% uh, damage reduction, 30% damage reduction, then Scrum Guard. You also get at least 7 BP per turn. If she counters, she gets even more. So, she generates a lot of BP to keep using her best skills that we'll be discussing later. So, pretty nice effects for a character. Moving on, skill number one is called Blood Sucker, single target slash with just 1 BP cost the power that recovers HP by around 1000. Good enough, because it's almost free and she will always chase, meaning that even when you use this, you still get some good damage. The second one, Exploding Mystic Slash, is a full AoE attack with just slash damage and C power that can debuff to different status, endurance and dexterity by 15%. Debuffing dexterity is nice because she can already debuff str and she can already debuff intelligence but she's not really a very good str debuffer but she is a very good intelligence debuffer with mirage step that is a 4 bp aoe attack that becomes 3 bp if you amplify from her very old style or you can also just run that uh, plume dance that is a c power aoe intelligence debuff that debuffs 20 percent higher so, she's only missing out on an STR debuff. You can still inherit Bloom Blossom and use it instead. It has the same cost. The third one is Ezra Instant Blade. A single target attack with just slash damage. And before attacks, grants all surviving allies Phantom. That has 25% chance to evade. She already has 25% chance to evade from Ezra user. So, she is likely to not get hit if the enemy is attacked multiple times. This will also stack with other people. And they have evasion chances like uh, Melissa, like for example Final Impress. So if you are using these characters together, they will give you lots of evasion. She would then buff all status by 25% of all surviving allies before she attacks. That means that the attack itself will be stronger. It starts with S power, but will feel more in line like a double S power attack. Then she recovers all surviving allies BP by 1, including herself. That's why she starts the fight with 11, because she wants to use this on start. And effectively, you are only spending 10 BP. And if you are attacking with Ocelus, you get at least 5, meaning that you can use this cycle of Ezra Instant Blade. Then a normal attack, Ezra Instant Blade again. But it can get much better than this if you are using her for a counter. Because you can inherit the same attack that she uses Azure Strife. Of course, it uses 11 as well. And if the enemy uses a direct attack on you, you will counter two times with Azure's Revenge. That means that you will get 4 BP every time you counter. That's awesome, right? But you will just use her as a full counter specialist instead of a buffer. If you want to use her as a buffer and BP battery, you actually want to use Azure Instant Blade, normal attack or Bloodsucker. As for other inheritance, you could theoretically inherit Mirage slash Kick, but I think it's much better to just inherit Azure Strife. In most scenarios, there is Rising Nova Plus that becomes a skill that can remove 
buffs from enemies. This can be super useful, but if you have Asper Girl, you're probably using her for this role. There is Gleaming Slash that will buff STR if you only have the New Year version. And Plume Dance to the buff intelligence like we said before. Like also Barrage Step if you have this version. You still have a way to the buff intelligence of multiple targets. And there is also Phantom Blade. That's a single target attack that is just as powered that counters evasively with Mirage Step. So you actually be able to evade even the first hit from the enemies and you can still counter with your in Azure Revenge. So Azure Revenge becomes evasive instead of defensive. But that's just for those that have the Global X version and want to debuff intelligence of multiple enemies via counter. That's very specific. Well, Asil is a pretty strong unit that actually does not need inheritance if you don't have. She works pretty well. She is either a um, multi-specialist by giving chance to evasion, uh, all status buff, giving BP. She also has Scrum Guard to decrease damage taken all times. She barely takes damage herself. She can debuff Dax for now or Intelligence via Inheritance. She can become a uh, counter specialist for Slash. Plenty of different utilities. Well, Juden is still a better counter. We will have other buffers that also buff better. But she's just a little bit of everything. While still performing well in every single role. When you think about the utility of the character, you could say that she's an OP grade. But eventually she falls off and we will just be seeing a triple S grade character that works well. Not exactly required. And since she's a jack of all trades, in the future she will be a master of none. Asus has another style in the future, and this one is more of a STR intelligence debuffer that applies a passive to the party to allow everyone to debuff. Well, she also can apply a uh, evasion chance that lasts for 4 turns and has chase attacks and attack and defense boost. A pretty nice and interesting character. Well, that means that Asilus has a future. The next character is Jen. He is a farmer with 120% STR and 88% uh, agility. It will be higher value since he actually needs to do damage and be fast. His endurance is higher than his will and his will is kind of bad for boss fights. All the other status won't matter as much. Moving forward, we start 11 BP, so that he can use a skill that costs 11 on turn 1. And when he uses skill number 2 or skill number 1, he's going to follow up with Scattered Paddles. Scattered Paddles is a triple S power attack with Slash and Code that will be used on rank 1. More about that later. When he lands a weak attack, he will grant himself this heat up that increases damage potential by 10% for the whole fight, and he will also buff his STR by 20%, so he wants to be used versus enemies weak to slash and cold. Then, when attack damage will reduce it by 25%, and when landing a weak attack, he recovers BP by 2. Again, he really wants to attack weak targets. Then he has 30% uh, damage increase and reduces damage taken by 30%. So yeah, he has two damage reduction passives to allow him to work well as a counter unit via inheritance. Damage potential of the character is a little limited when you think about passives only. He can reach as much as 80% after attacking five times with targets because he will be chasing. He can do that by turn three and he self buffs in STR every time that he lands weak attacks. Now, skill number one is Blizzard Plus. This is an old skill amplified that is single target, double S power, innate BP cost. It has a high chance to paralyze, but paralyze chance is not really important. Even though he does have intelligence, you are not going to paralyze with 67% intelligence. But the thing is, Blizzard Plus will trigger scattered paddles as a chase. So, well, see that he will get to BP when attacking with targets. Well, that means five and then seven because both attacks have slash and cold. It also means that if you're using eight and recovering seven, in the end, you're just spending one. And since he starts with 11, you can actually use this three times in a row easily for farming. And that's exactly where you're going to use Jen. And well, you could say that he replaces Impress. Like I have been running Final Impress for uh, free quests as a solower, she can inherit Quadruple Moon Strike from her Global Axe style. That is this one here. And four hits with a Triple S weapon is enough to solo one big enemy on three quests. And the other one is Leon. Well, Leon the third has a very good cycle for both Blunt and Cold. 
or single target as well, with Acrobatic Grace and then Frozen Chaser. He can solo those two types of stages. So if you don't have either Leon or Empress with his cycles, Jen is going to replace them for you. But if you already have Den or Farm, you don't need Jen. But he does have something else. He has Tres Flores. This is a 4S power, just slash attack with 11 BP that he will chase with his scatter paddles. That means that you are starting with 4S and then following up with Triple S. That's very powerful damage. And if there is just one enemy per wave, this is going to be amazing. And it's pretty similar to what we had in the past with, for example, Rofus. Remember Rofus? Well, Rofus can be compared because he opens with double S power and then uses 4S power. Remember with Ancito, but then it opens with Blunt and goes for a slash. You could say that you're getting the damage of Gun and Blade is stronger because you will still buff your STR on the first hit and the second hit will be even stronger with Jen. So, pretty similar setup, but here it's more for slash damage since the opener is a slash. He also has Cosmic Flash Stardust. That is a full AoE attack with just slash damage that can only be used once per battle. If he uses this and chases with a single target attack, well, it doesn't really help much in some scenarios. You probably just use this Flores if there's just one enemy, but maybe if a stage has one big boss and minions, it can still be used if there's just one wave. Because on the second, he will not be able to use Blizzard Plus. But he can use a weaker attack via Inheritance if you want. And talking about Inheritance, he can debuff both Agility and STR, but he's not really a good character for this anyway, and he can inherit the Apathy from his second Platinum style. This gives him an evasive counter stance, that means that he won't take damage from direct attacks, he will fully evade and counter with a triple S slash attack, and since he uh, self buffs when attacking weak targets, he will trigger his hit ups up to 5 times, buff STR and do more damage. Well, the Platinum version of Jin already does that pretty well, you can see that he recovers 1 BP and buffs STR by 15%. Well, we are getting 20% STR buff and 2 BP. So it's an upgrade, not that you really, really need this anyway. Another inheritance that makes sense is Spinning Slash for when he starts with his 11 BP attack and then he has a cheaper one to use on the second wave. He can also use Triple Sword Slash Amplified that becomes a power row attack, but that won't help as much since we need more than this to solo. And he also has Watermelon Flash from his club version that will allow him to recover at least 1.2 thousand HP. And it does have Slash, so he keeps his Slash effectiveness when attacking. All the other inheritances don't make much sense. Jen is just a damage dealer, a good one to be sad. But the case here is that he just gets detroned easily since most damage dealers will have some sort of party support, much like Joe and now Kaiser. So Jen, as raw power, could be said to be a triple S grade, and he's also a solver for grind, but he's not as important character that you should be pulling for. If you get him, take advantage of the character. If you don't, you should just skip, unless you are pretty close for a pity. And now back to the banner image. Is this banner worth summoning for? In my opinion, yes. It's the best current banner released for Saga from Tier 1. And the other better offers a little less. We have a Kaiser with strong damage and support. Asilus with strong damage and support, counter, buffs, and gen that can be used for grind. And even boss fights if you're lacking real nukers. Well, his damage is still pretty fine if you think about it. But he is the less important of it all because he doesn't offer anything else besides damage. But every one of these characters have some sort of utility. That's why I believe this banner deserves a Silver Plus award. I pulled it here, got Al-Qaeda and Anasolus into Muchis and stopped it, so I'm pretty happy with my results. But what are your opinions here? Please say here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, we have links in the description. And I hope to see you soon in the next video or live stream. Bye.